Good afternoon. How is the mood going? After lunch, I'm sure it's, it's much better than early in the morning, no? A couple of things. I hope um, most of you had the chance to eat the lunch that was provided but in HHM, the um, bento boxes, they are distributed in case of disaster. So you were basically eating food for after a disaster. So how, how good was that? It was great, no? A couple of announcements. If you haven't gone smoking, I'm sure not all, all of you are smokers, but beside the smoking area, there is a um, truck from the Hyogo Prefecture that simulates earthquakes. It's amazing. It's really, really good. So I encourage you not to smoke, but to try that, the truck. So as we are learning another word, by today you have already around seven, the word of, of this afternoon is you key. You key. Have you had lunch, man? Come on. You key. Perfect. It means courage. It means going and passing these adversities. So today, we are going to hear from mayors that have to have the courage to stand in front of uh, many challenges. But I want to announce also that after the, this plenary, we are going to have way more sessions. So if you want to take a picture, do it now. One, two, three. And here's your map to get on time to your session, please. And now, to introduce the, the panel, I would like to welcome once again Guang Zhechen from the World Bank. We're competing. Who is going to be more time on the stage? <laughs> Thank you, Guang. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm not going to say much. Um, I think uh, there will be going to be a very interesting uh, panel discussion of the mayors, but I will do want to take this opportunity to uh, express our appreciation to uh, Mayor uh, uh, Kiyomoto for hosting us and also to share with us his experience in managing um, uh, urban, is a urban uh, a city environment uh, in face of this uh, disaster risk. Uh, risk. I'm very honored to be here to, uh, to say a few words. I think we all know that urbanization is, is a continued trend. We already have more than 50% of the population living in cities, and this will continue to increase in the coming years. And this kind of urbanization is posing both an opportunity, because urban is a center of economic activities and jobs and growth, but it's also uh, creating risk and vulnerability that we all need to manage. And we also understand that uh, climate change is not a, a distant future. The impact is upon all of us already in which or poor countries, which and poor cities. There are different elements of managing these challenges, but I think some of those uh, experience I think our mayor is, is gonna share with us. But I think as a number of common features is, is really, first of all, we need to build resilient infrastructure uh, in the urban settings. And the second is really uh, community engagements. We need to bring our stakeholders together. And, and of course, we can bring in innovations. Again, this is reflecting the, the key theme of these uh, conferences about transitions, about resilience, about innovations. Uh, I should only take this opportunity to mention that the, uh, from the World Bank Group, we consider ourselves a strong partner with all the cities around the world, they're really supporting you and sharing knowledge and providing critical finances in supporting the city resilient agendas in face of these climate-related disasters, or some of them are non-climate-related disasters. 
uh, GFDR, which you are very familiar with now. Of course, in addition to hosting uh, these events, but also it's a facility to provide technical assistance, connecting uh, practitioners, providing knowledge, but also informing our World Bank finances in terms of supporting your needs. I think that's the setting of the, this afternoon's uh, roundtable. With that, I want to thank you for your participation, and I pass on to our moderators. Thank you. Thank you very much, Guang, for the very nice introduction. Uh, this afternoon, I have the honor of uh, sharing this stage with uh, three honorable mayors uh, from different parts of the world. So first, I would like to introduce our mayors who will speak today. F first of all, it's my honor to introduce Mayor Hideyasu Kiyomoto, the esteemed mayor of our host city, Himeji. Mayor Kiyomoto, thank you very much for your generosity and hospitality in hosting this event in your charming city. Uh, we all love uh, Himeji. Uh, we sincerely appreciate your welcoming us here. Mayor Kiyomoto is currently serving his second term, having first been elected in April 2019 and re-elected in April 2023. Before his tenure as mayor, he had a distinguished medical career. He graduated from Kagawa Medical University with a medical degree in 1988 and earned his PhD in medicine in 1992. Throughout his career, Mayor Kiyomoto has held various positions at Kigawa Medical University and the Kotonhoku University and served as program officer in, at the Japan Agency for Medical Research and Development. He also gained valuable international experience as research fellow at the University of Texas Health Science Center at uh, San Antonio. So thank you very much, Mayor, for being us, uh, here with us today. The second, I'm also pleased to introduce our next uh, mayor is Mayor Luisa Salguero. Uh, is the mayor of, uh, uh, is, she's the president of city council and mayor of Matosinhos, Portugal. Mayor Salguero. Uh, and uh, Mayor Salguero is uh, the president of National Association of Municipalities of Portugal making a historic achievement as the first woman to hold this esteemed position. Her remarkable public service career began in 1997 when she became a counselor for the municipality. She further distinguished herself in 2005 by being elected as a deputy in the Assembly of the Repu Republic. In 2017, she assumed the role of mayor of Matosinhos. During her time in the National Assembly, Mayor Salguero served on several parliamentary commissions and was elected Vice President of NATO's Commission for Energy and Environment Security. So welcome, Mayor, and thank you for attending this session. And the third mayor, uh, I would like to introduce uh, Mayor uh, Hadianto Rasid of Palu, Central Sulawesi, Indonesia. <laughs> Hadianto has been serving as a mayor since February uh, 2021. Prior to become mayor, Hadianto has was a member of both the Palu City Regional Legislative Council and the Central Sulawesi Regional Legislative Council. As the mayor of Palu, he has brought the vision of Palu moving forward to life, focusing on rebuilding the city after the devastating 2018 earthquake tsunami and the liquid, liquefaction disasters, 
as well as navigating the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. Under his leadership, the Palu city government has received several awards from the national government, including the second best regional development award nationally in both 2023 and 2024, presented by the president of the republic. So before we start our panel, please allow me to give some initial uh, remarks to frame the discussions. Cities around the world are becoming bigger and more densely populated and more interconnected than ever before. The rise of cities present many new social and economic opportunities for their residents, but also exposes cities and their people, assets, natural environment, and economies to greater risks from climate change and all kinds of natural hazards. As you know, about 70% of the greenhouse gas emissions and energy consumption in the world occur in cities. And the annual cost cities incur from weather-related and other disasters surpass billions of dollars uh, in, in the last few years. And the climate shocks and the stress are becoming more frequent and intense. In the World Bank, we have been supporting many cities around the world in improving their resilience to all kinds of natural disasters and climate change. And this has been a major uh, growing engagement for us uh, with, uh, across the portfolio. And uh, within GFDR, we have a lot of programs to support cities, such as uh, cities resilient our city resilience program that helps cities become more resilient to uh, provide uh, risk-informed urban planning tools. So in this new reality, city mayors play an increasingly pivotal role in partnering to ensure urban resilience and the disaster resilience in the f and the safety of their constituents in changing city environment. So must, mayors must lead strategic policy and the investment decisions for urban planning and development, infrastructure, natural and the green assets and regulation. They must also work with very tight budget, seek partnerships for funding to f for their financing needs. So I look forward to learning from you all about these critical challenges. Now, uh, we will need to change a little bit of the program because uh, the mayor of uh, Palu needs to go to catch a flight uh, back uh, to, to, to uh, I think, Thailand. So he cannot stay for the whole session. So with that, so I will uh, uh, ask Mayor uh, Hadianto Rasil uh, from Palu, Indonesia, to first to give his uh, introductory remarks. Let's welcome the mayor. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my distinguished uh, Vice World Bank, and uh, of course, all ladies and gentlemen that are attending in this forum. Uh, let me introduce myself just a, just a little. Uh, I came from Palu and I'm a mayor now. Palu is located in Indonesia. This is a small city in the central province of Sulawesi. Uh, probably Palu starting to, to, uh, to recognize by everybody when in, uh, the disaster happened in this city because the disaster happened in this city is not common disaster because when earthquake hit the Palu, it's followed by a second phenomenal, uh, uh, second phenomenal uh, situation. There is a tsunami, tsunami that's common happen in Japan. But one thing is more and more very uh, terrible thing is uh, liquefaction. Liquefaction is uh, which uh, where our tooth 
sub-district in Palu that sank, sank by the land. And each of the, each of the sub-district, the, the wide area around 187 hectare. And the second is around 60 hectares. That sank by the land after the earthquake. So what happened? Of course, the damage of this uh, disaster is very terrible because the devastation is so huge, so huge. Many, many uh, houses uh, damage, get damaged because of it. So the infrastructure and many things, especially if we're talking about the uh, victims, all of that, that's touch uh, about uh, 3,000 people died because of it, because of it. And uh, when I met uh, Mr. Louis yesterday, Mr. Louis told me that uh, the rehabilitation and reconstruction that's undertaken by World Bank in Central Sulawesi, especially in Palu, that was a, a best among project that undertaken by, by World Bank. Am I happy with that? Yeah, I'm happy, but that's enough. But that's not enough. Because of what? Because the tragedy, the disaster already happened. And it causes many, many, uh, many, many, uh, many, many problems. Such a, a, uh, such a, a damage, like I was told you, the victims, and so many, and so many others. So I'm not happy with that, but uh, so this is time for me to share to you all in this uh, special moment that uh, now we have to thinking, we have to think how to prepare everything better than before the disaster happened. Because when it's happened, so we will, uh, uh, we will, uh, uh, what is it? We will pay more than uh, when uh, uh, we uh, make a good prevention before the disaster. So if you're talking about the collaboration, yeah, we cannot stand alone with this thing. So I imagine sometimes what if the World Bank's not, uh, not give a, a loan to Indonesia to, to, to cover this situation. How the, how the rehabilitation and reconstruction can, can going faster. So I believe if this thing happen, we cannot stand alone. So we have to join, we have to work together for it. But better not uh, work together for it after the disaster, but better if we work together before the disaster, before the disaster. Because if something happened with our brothers, I mean, if there is a rise of victim because of that, so the victim is our brothers. Yeah, the victim was our sister. Even probably we are not in the city, we are not in this country, but everywhere, because we are one. So this is a, a great time for me that I've been invited by the World Bank to be, to be able to attend to this forum and to share everything. And then special, I want to say thanks to the World Bank that already uh, give a full support, full support for the for Indonesian uh, government, especially to my city, to rebuild again my city with a with a uh, build better, build better before. <clears throat> and uh, ladies and gentlemen, before I'm leaving this uh, this forum, uh, <clears throat> I want to say I want to tell you all. You know. When disaster happened, after met of disaster, after met of disaster, always the victims is woman and girl. This uh, social problem is a happen, happen too in uh, in, uh, uh, in Indonesia, especially when Palu uh, facing this disaster. Social problems. Social problem. What happened? There is a gender-based violation that's happened among our women, among our children, 
Because of because of what? Because of the situation and condition. I believe all of us who are sitting here don't want this to happen to to anybody, especially to the someone that closest to us. So, if we agree with that, so this is time for for us to think together, to work together, not just after the disaster, but how to make a world together before disaster. Thanks for the time that I've already given to me to stand up here. And probably what I'm saying, this is just a little, but hopefully, yeah, it can be a, yeah, it can be good something for us. Thank you. Okay, now let's uh, uh, have on stage Mayor K uh, Kiyomoto from uh, Himeji and uh, Mayor Salguero from Matosinos. Please join me. So let me uh, here start uh, with our host, Mayor, uh, the Honorable Mayor, Mr. Uh, Kiyomoto. No? Could you please share a bit about uh, the challenge you face in Himeji City in terms of uh, climate change and the disasters? And additionally, what kind of uh, civil protection systems has Himeji put in place to protect its residents? Thank you. For, uh this city uh, is uh, very, you know, there are rare cases uh, anti-disaster because, you know, the, the city center, we have our beautiful castle, more than still 400 years over. There is no big earthquake, Kobe, was a great big earthquake, but you know the uh, 60 kilometers far from here, uh, the you know the shaking level was uh, you know intensity four level or something like that. So that you know uh, the rocks did not you know the so big you know the damages, and then we can help to the Kobe's population. And we have also uh, river, the kind of a big three rivers here. And sometimes, you know, the uh, water, uh, you know, the flood was happened. But, you know, the recently, you know, the, we just, you know, the uh, stop to the over limitation levels. And then, but recently today also it has a heavy rain so uh, linear you know rain bands you know the come you know rush to because uh, this is a monsoon area Philippine Taiwan Japan is uh, will get might you know get the typhoon attack uh, several you know the flood was happened so uh, in a ordinary uh, usually we you know the predict how the big, you know, the uh, blood re flood levels, and then, you know, getting the, you know, the deeper, uh, maker the deeper, something like that. And then uh, pro for the protective, you know, uh, populations, or, you know, the human life, uh, you know, the alert system by using, you know, the, uh, sirens or you know speakers every small community more than 300 you know uh, in this city uh, we have a small community is uh, more than 60 or uh, 70 around and they have a uh, you know the uh, summer sirens a lot and then everybody get the received, you know, the a lot of information from their, you know, the handy phone or a cellular home. Uh, so that, you know, uh, always, you know, the uh, evacuated areas, 
push out the information to the population. And then, you know, uh, actually, uh, we are very happy. Uh, not so big, you know, the Sibia earthquake flood, uh, still we didn't get. So, but, you know, now we rescue always, sending the, you know, the uh, officers or some, you know, the uh, people or volunteer to that, uh, you know, earthquake area, and then getting that the knowledge we share the community, something like that. Thanks a lot, uh, Mayor. Uh, some very important uh, points. Uh, you, know, you mentioned the sort of importance of uh, uh, sort of the, the earthquakes, but also with the climate change, sort of more flooding is happening. You strengthen your flood protection systems. Uh, you have the the what we call the early warning system. You know, the sirens, speakers, getting the communities sort of involved early, so the, when the disaster happens, so they can get prepared or warned. So all all these uh, important important measures. Thank you, Mayor. And then let me turn to uh, Mayor Luisa Salguero. So I, I understand uh, Matosinho is uh, is the 20th largest city in Portugal, but it's also first city to be recognized as a Making Cities Resilient 2030 campaign resilience hub. Uh, you have uh, hosted a European Forum uh, for Disaster Reduction. So what are the key climate and disaster challenges do you face in um, Portugal's uh, north coast, and uh, how has uh, Matosinho become such a leader in advancing this urban resilience agenda? Well, thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. First of all, I'd like to say that it's quite an honor for us to stay here in Imeji and to come from Europe to share our experience with you and also to learn so much with this country and this city that is an international example in civil protection and to know personally the mayor of Imeji. Then, just to uh, say that Matosinhos is the seventh biggest city municipality in Portugal. Uh, we are a small city if, uh, comparing with Japanese municipalities, we have 175,000 inhabitants and only 60 kilometers, square kilometers, so we are very dense and small, but we face the same challenges as other coastal municipalities. We have around 16 kilometers of coastal line, and of course, we face the climate change uh, challenges such as coastal erosion, sea level rise, and urban floods and heavy rains. And uh, despite these natural challenges, we also face industrial situations and risks because we host uh, the um, oil, refi uh, oil refinery, uh, commercial harbor, and also uh, the road lines and uh, the uh, um, lines that cross our municipality that every day transport uh, hazardous goods. So there's quite uh, dangerous and risks in our territory and uh, people were looking at and national government for us, such how could we deal with so many problems. So what we did in the first moment was to change our local civil protection services and there's only a leadership and only a services where all the uh, fire departments can answer together so everyone one can call the same number, and there's an organization, a shared services, where everybody has their teams and we are working together. But of course, uh, for natural uh, problems, we are very committed with the, the scientific solutions, and we work together with different stakeholders, mainly universities. So we are collecting from many, many years uh, all the information ab about the evolution of the sand in our coast, and we have two kind of problems. Some beach uh, we have erosion and other we are getting more and more sand. So it's a small territory with a different 
problems, and we are uh, uh, sharing it with all our community in order to make everybody involved. About the um, problems with urban floods and heavy rains, we have an example of um, urban gardens, more than 300 urban, small urban gardens that have been used for agriculture. That involves all the community and are a new answer that we are facing, that we are using. And also we are, were the first municipality, Portuguese municipality to approve the new uh, general urban plan. And we decided that we must have ev any construction must have at least 20% of uh, areas that are water, not waterproofing in order to assure that rain will have the uh, chance to go inside. So that uh, kind of natural based solutions that we are using also in our coasts have been recognized for the national government and for our partners such as United Nations that we are going the, the right, uh, uh, doing the right path in order to have all the solutions. Uh, this is, these are the problems that main cities or municipalities that have these coastal situations are facing. The difference between us that made us become the first Portuguese resilience hub that the United Nations have been recognizing us is because we were the first to to change, to transform the way that we organize the service. We have one only service and we are committing everybody. We uh, open a awareness academy, so everyone is, has been teaching and getting skills in order to know how to act in case of an earthquake or the floods, and uh, working with everybody, children, old people. I think that this is a problem for any, for every citizen, we understand that every citizen counts as part of our team, and this kind of strategy uh, made us more capable to take the right political decisions, we, because we have all the data that we have been collecting from 80 years, and we are now planning the next 10 years using all this scientific uh, information, using uh, uh, geographic-based information tools. So uh, we believe that we are going in the right way, uh, including, of course, we, we, every day we have a new challenge, but we think that we are doing the best uh, commitment with the commitment of everybody, the local level, the regional level, the national level, and we are leading by the example because Matuzings has been recognized as the most innovative uh, municipality in these policies. Muito obrigado. This is very inspiring, uh, Mayor, to, to hear you know, this, uh, uh, how the range of activities you, 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 you're working on this. Uh, I think uh, the, the issue you man uh, mentioned, you know, like a coastal resilience, the coastal change with the climate change, and how you adapt to it. This is uh, faced by many, many uh, countries. Uh, I think the, uh, especially I'm very impressed with uh, the way that you do using nature-based solutions really to deal with uh, urban flooding issues. I think this is uh, something that uh, many, most if not sort of most of our cities are experiencing, intense f uh, sort of flooding level. And I think this is uh, the way you, you, you point a way to do it. It's uh, not just, uh, you know, usually we used to focus a lot on the drainage system to let the water flow out, but the, we forget the, the nature actually can absorb a lot of water. So you, you, you know, in the planning you said 20% of the surface needs to be water penetrable. Use the urban parks, urban gardens to absorb, retain the water. These are actually really important things that a lot of cities need to do to increase the sort of urban, urban resilience. Thank you for sharing uh, the, the, the ideas, the things, what you do. I'm gonna ask a sort of another, another question, and uh, if people on the floor 
uh, have some questions, maybe you can uh, sort of stand. We may have uh, uh, time for one or two questions uh, from the from the floor. So, you know, just uh, with the with the change, one of the things I think for cities on the resilience side is to managing uncertainty. You cannot sort of plan what's going to happen this year. Uh, a lot of unexpected things happen. The, probably the only thing you know for certain is, you know, something is going to happen, you know what's going to happen. So as mayor, how do you get prepared to deal with this kind of uh, uncertainty? You know, I, I'm trained as an urban planner, but you, like these are the things you can not plan. So how do you deal with the uncertainty, especially I think it's more and more with the climate change, with the disasters you face more often. Uh, any, any ideas like uh, what, uh, what are you doing on this, uh, working on the uncertainty? Actually, you know, the, our uh, protective plan against uh, disaster is a uh, little bit uh, uh, old because uh, based on the, you know, the rainfall uh, statistical data is uh, change, must be changed uh, recently 10, 20 years. So uh, we always uh, provided, you know, the uh, road or a river and safety place or something, everything recalculated again. Large scale, you know, the linear rain belts, uh, typhoon size became a bigger than bigger year by year. So, you know, uh, please, you know, the, uh, look at uh, the center picture of that. It's a northern territory of our city, uh, beside, uh, just adjunct city uh, area. And then in the mountainside, there is no big river. But, you know, like a uh, uh, bottom of the bowl, you know, and then mountain area gathers so many water and come down to into like this. And seems to be at the lake and so many people was, you know, the drone. And then recently, Japan, uh, you know, the flat place change to the farm to the houses or companies. So if the farmer's area, you know, we grew the rice so that, you know, the water can be, you know, accept abundant water sometimes. So, but, you know, the we recently uh, build a race track for horse Wa became uh, in an uh, occasion of the big rainfall, and then it was you know the stored, and a huge amount of the water, and then protect to the uh, houses was you know the attack to the flood. So uh, after it was completed uh, five, four years ago, and then after that around the castle no water ups level. So maybe the, it's a recalculated and analysis of the climate data has been updated. And also now we are facing to the coastal side is a big earthquake, you know, maybe that happened to Japan, uh, southern part trough shaking, maybe the 70 to 80 percent, you know, the occasional is ha will be happen. So we protect, you know, the protect the wall against the coast, and then evacuating the tower we built. Uh, fortunately, Himeji uh, has a uh, small islands, four, 40 small islands in just, you know, the in front of our city, uh, but you know the. It was covered inland sea, so you know maybe the three meter is enough. It's a recalculated again, so that that is a typhoon level. But as a uh, city like a Kobe, Osaka, must be protecting the wall and sometimes gate wall 
to the river should be uh, rebuilt again. So we always, you know, the update to the data about the climate or earthquake, you know, prediction. That is important. And then we have to spread the information to the citizens. That is also so that, you know, the evacuate test or very important. So every uh, year we make a evacuation, you know, the test for you know, or, or widely in a community. Thank you, thank you, Mayor. So the, there's a lot of things there, but also particularly the, the calculation, the parameters different. The planning parameters we used is not, uh, we need to update. Uh, we say usually we have like a 100 year event that seems to be happening every year or every five years instead of every 100 years. So we need to do more. Mayor uh, Sagero, you, how do we deal with the uh, uncertainty? Well, I believe that in order to reduce that unpredictability, we must plan. The answer is planning and to involve everybody. So each person knows what to do in case of a disaster or a crisis. And in our case, we approved the action plan for sustainable energy and climate, and also the plan for combat climate change and the forest defense plan. And we are working very hard on SDGs. We uh, know that our index of SDGs is 76%, so it's in a high level. And uh, we were we are the same commitment with the, the national government in order to be always improving and increasing. And our goal is to be carbon neutral in 2030. The national uh, goal is 2045. We anticipate it for 2030, so everybody must know uh, very precisely this role in the plans. And if we have all this, uh, the, the, the capacity to preview all these uh, difficult situations, I think that, you know, despite all this climate change that we are facing, we, uh, we can have some kind of uh, co cohesion and some kind of predictability. So in each situation, we know who should act, how should act, and what to do. And that is the only key to solve this problem that uh, the planet every day presents us. Thank you, thanks a lot, Mayor. So we need to do more plan, better plan, to deal with the uncertainties. So, and, and uh, it's also really congratulate Mayor, you, the cities at the forefront of climate change mitigation. You know, instead of 20, 20, 2045, you try to be carbon neutral by 2030. So uh, this is worldwide, you're leading the way uh, for climate change. I think that local authorities are leading, uh, leading the, the way for, leading for by the climate example. change actions. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Mayor. Uh, so we, we're running out of time. I just want to say, you know, really want to thank uh, the mayors for sharing the experience. I think uh, the, the main thing is the climate change impact, it's not happening in the future, it's already happened. It's happening now, and the cities, citizens are feeling it, mayors are dealing with it, they are in the front lines. So really, thank you so much uh, for sharing the experience. Let's give applause to the mayors, thank you. Thank you very much, thank you very much. Please go to the sessions and we wait for you in an hour for the final plenary of the day. Thank you very much. Thank you.